Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I just want to do a short video. I'm going to do a series of these actually on quick tips that can really improve the solving of these harder puzzles. Um, on screen, we've got a 10 out of 10 rated difficulty puzzle from um, dailycolistodoku.com. Um, so I think the average solve time for this puzzle, if you look at their website, is about an hour. Um, so it is very, very hard. Um, people who frequent that site tend to be expert solvers. So if it's taking expert solvers an hour to solve it, it's, it's really, really tough. Um, but, uh, and this will help you with Killer Sudoku or Greater Than Killer. This um, actually doesn't use the Greater Than uh, symbols at all, this, uh, this tip today. Uh, I want to talk about how you start a puzzle like this. Um, now remember, on these 10 out of 10 difficulty puzzles, there's very often um, quite a difficult start. The first step can be uh, hard to see, and if you don't see it, you could literally be staring at it for half an hour and make no progress at all. Um, so, one tip. You can see we can put the four, 1 and 3 in here. That's not really a tip. Um, is to ask yourself where you can place difficult numbers. So, let's have a look at this top left box and really think about which numbers are restricted in terms of this box. Now the first and most obvious number that's restricted, pause actually and, and just study it yourselves for a moment, is the 9. So where can a 9 go in this box? You can see we've got lots of small numbers um, and the 9 is obviously ruled out from, from these six squares. But in fact, the 9 is also ruled out from this square. If there was a 9 in this square, this square would be a 3, and that's going to clash with this 4 cage here. So the first thing we can note is that an, a 9 is restricted. But we can go much further. So take a look at this box and, and ask yourself whether or not we can make a further deduction about what can go in this box. And the trick here and we've seen it a couple of times before in earlier videos on, the, on these very difficult killers, is actually to ponder this 12 cage. Now a 12 cage is interesting for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons it's interesting is that it can never take a 6. Um, so let's have a think about where a 6 might be able to go in this box. And that these are very carefully designed, these puzzles. So we're going to see something interesting. No six here for obvious reasons. No six in these two squares for obvious reasons. Six here, can that work? Well, it could, but that's going to give a three here. Same problem as with a nine in this 12 cage. Again, so the six isn't here. The six isn't here, because then we'd have another six below it. And all of a sudden, we're running out of spaces for the six. We've got four possible candidates left. Can the 6 go in either of these cages or cells? No, because if it does, again, this cell would also have to be a 6 and we'd have a clash. So believe it or not, there is only two positions, or there are only two positions a 6 can go in this box, and it's up here. And if you spot that, you are really, really um, making immediate progress on the puzzle. You can see we can straight away this 5 is restricted. What? How can this 6 be filled now? Well, that looks going to have to be a 2 or a 5, which means this will have to be a 1 or a 4. A 1 won't work, so we've already got a 1 down here. So in fact, this is going to have to be 4 and 2 now. And you can do lots of things from here. I mean, for instance, what can go in the 9 cage now? In this square, we could only have the numbers um, 5, 7, and 8. You can immediately see 5 is a problem because it clashes with the 4 here. Um, so we can remove that. This again, 8 is going to be a problem because it's going to give a 1 here. And like that. And you can immediately see again, all of a sudden, this can't be an 8 because that would give us a 4 here. So we can remove the 8. 5's here, and that gives us another 4 here, and so on. Um, I'm not going to say the puzzle is completely straightforward from here on out. It isn't, um, but I think you'd agree that if you can get uh, 6 or 7 numbers in the grid straight off the bat, you're really starting to make progress. So I wish you luck with the rest of it. 
with that soon with another edition of Cracking Cryptic very soon. Thanks for watching.